Hello there, my name is Michael Maynard and welcome back to Gorilla Picking. Now, we are going to do the second video on this Chubb safe lock that I am going to try and manipulate open. Absolutely no clue what I'm doing with this thing guys because honestly it is so so different to the Sergeant Greenleaf and the other group 2 locks that I'm uh, used to manipulating that I really am having to wing this and, uh, and learn as I go along. Now, the first thing I've done is clean it up a bit so it was absolutely filthy, there was plaster, dust and grease and shit everywhere. It's clearly been sitting for a long time so I have cleaned up the exterior of the lock and now I don't get real filthy every time I touch the damn thing. Okay, second thing. I've had a bit of a think about how to how to measure and how to mark the area where the contact points are. Now, the guts of this thing is what we need to do is repeatedly and very very accurately measure the position of something inside this lock which is around about here it's around about in that blank zone somewhere now we cannot see it all right we can only feel it and if we were using ampl amplification we could probably hear it as well but the point is we're trying to measure the position of the dial on something that we cannot visualize so it's pretty obvious that we are going to need some way of marking where we are. Now, my first thought actually was just to put a random mark on the dial in here somewhere, didn't really matter where, and measure my position relative to that. Now, in fact, that might have actually worked, all right? I, 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 I still might give that a bit of a go. But what I have decided to do instead, though, a, a way that I think is going to be more accurate, I'm actually going to use the markings of the dial itself. Now, this is a very interesting dial. So you, you will notice that the numbers don't go right the way around. All right. So we have got 0 to 100, but we've got this gap here. Now, when you look at this dial carefully, if, if you line the 0 up with the, uh, the opening index here, you notice that directly opposite that is the number 60. So what they've actually done here is divided the dial into 120 increments of 3 degrees each. So uh, 360 degrees divided by 120 is, is 3, right? But they've only used 100 of those. Now that's going to be very important shortly when I talk to you about vernier scales, right? But for the time being, what we've got to do is fill in some of these missing three degree steps. So what I thought I'd do is, is a little bit of a second hand method here, but it's actually seemed to work quite well. What I've done, I have lined the zero up perfectly with the opening index. Let's just uh, move that so that you can see maybe a, a little bit better what I'm doing here. And then I have gone round with a felt pen, okay, and marked three degree increments around the dial ring. So I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little marks all at three degrees now. All right, so what am I going to do next? I'm going to transfer those marks round to this area here. That kind of makes some sense, doesn't it? So what I've done, I've lined the zero up with the 10 mark, and I'm just going to go back round and mark these three degree increments on the dial. So it it's not going to be absolutely 100% accurate, fellas, because we're, multipl we're, we're doing a thing twice, so we're multiplying the potential errors by two. But what I've now got is a pretty accurate set of marks to work from. So. We're going to call these just a, uh, a, a an arbitrary figure, and so th this is zero. Obviously, I'm going to go nine, eight, seven, six, five. Let's make that one 
longer. So that's that's my that's my five, um, four, three, two, one. So what I've now got is a reasonable basis for making my contact point measurements. Again, I I don't know that they're going to be accurate to a thousandth of a degree, right? But they're going to give me something to work on, and uh, we're going to find out if that's accurate enough. I, I really don't know yet. Now, the other thing we're going to do is make ourselves a vernier gauge, and I may end up using this, and I may not. Now, I have already run one evolution, one, one all-wheels left evolution using this technique, and I got a really interesting graph out of it, guys, which I'm not going to show you yet. But I, I did get, it, it was a huge learning curve, believe me, the contact point, the, the right contact point is the only one I can feel. And I learnt some really interesting lessons about uh, uh, how to approach that and how to, uh, how to take measurements on it, which I'll tell you about later as well. But what I'm going to do next, I'm going to do this a second time. So we're going to take another graph. But this time what I'm going to use is a thing called a vernier scale. Now, this is a vernier manipulation scale. You can uh, download these off of uh, a website and print your own ones. What they do, they, they let you divide up one increment on the dial, which we have de uh, decided is three degrees, into ten accurate steps. And uh, you guys know how vernier scales work, so I won't belabor the point. But what you need to do to make one of these things work, you start out with a, a denigrate template like this. What you then do is measure the diameter of your dial. So I, uh, th this is a chub lock, so it, so it's British, obviously. So almost certainly the dial has been constructed in inches. Now I don't work in inches, guys. I, I really don't understand it. Okay, so if we measure this with the calipers, we get a diameter of near as damn it. 75 mils it's you know 74 and some change so what I am going to do is cut out one of these little wedges now okay well that was pretty interesting guys what happened was that I uh, I found that the kitchen scissors that I was using were just way too crude so I had to uh, nip away to the first aid kit and find some scissors which were a little bit more delicate. Perfect, okay, that looks damn good to me. Right, now what we're going to do is chop off all the excess. We don't need any of that stuff there. And the last thing we need to do finally is line this up smack on with the opening index so we want that there that line should line up with the nine yes it does okay and let's get a bit of tape on that have we got that accurate yes we have Let's get a bit on the other side. Right. Okay, well listen, I don't actually know if this is going to work. I have a reasonable feeling that this, this uh, pen thing that I put down the side here, I think that's going to work, all right? Whether or not my vernier indicator works, I really don't know. Now, if you guys want to know how a vernier scale works, please look that up. The, the bottom line is that the human eye is very, very, very good at a thing called vernier acuity, which <laughs> I do actually know an awful lot about, but it's not actually very good at guessing things. So the human eye can line up two lines this way, very, very well indeed. It can tell whether something's lined up or not. What it isn't good at, though, is guessing how far between two marks you are. So what this vernier scale does is is lets the brain do what it's good at. All right, so 
having got that part of the problem solved, we are now going to sit down and do a graph of this thing, do an initial graph and see what we get. Thanks for watching guys, my name's Michael Maynard, this is Gorilla Picking and this is video number two on the Chub.